hey welcome back so i'm just gonna fly through and exactly show you why you would use components in principal app and what's the benefit of it so components here are say if you would want to have an interactive layer to certain item or have different states to certain item like a button you would use components now i'm going to show you exactly what i mean by that so let's see imagine this item i have which i use for different videos i'm going to make it draggable so that let's say in our prototype i can drag it around like so in any direction as you can see besides being dragging like so the users wouldn't really see the feedback that this item is being dragged so i could use drivers i could use animations to make so happen or i could just make you know a couple of different states and keep it in one exact component and keep it at that i would just simply select the layer and click create component like so and as you can see it would open me like exactly the same view i had before but this is kind of like a master view so i would just copy let's see the same exact artboard on the left and just keep the same items and what i would want to maybe do to this item maybe i just want to add like a you know like a border so i would maybe add like a white border perhaps increase the size of it uh, let me just select it again so I'm gonna maybe add five or so maybe no border radius so let's keep it like this and I would just tell exactly what action would result in that state so I would maybe say hey on drag begins let's say show this and when the drag ends from that state just do that and I created a component now, which is actionable, and you can add as many states to this as you want, basically. So within our prototype preview, if I start dragging it, as you can see, it added a border. And if I stop, it brings it back and it's like nothing ever happened. Um, alternatively, you know, if I would want to do the same, I could, I could have just created a scene uh, duplicate like so. And just in the scene, let's say, I could have added like a border to one of the items, like so. Like this, let's say. And maybe just a different color, so you actually see what, what I mean. So maybe let's make it black. And reduce the radius. And as you can see, I have two different states. I could have stated, let's say, oh, on drag begin, open that frame. And on, let's say, drag ends, go back to that one. And that would also be, you know, doable. So if I drag, boom, it creates a corner. If I do it, it goes back. But now you would have to create a scene here for every single item. And it would just become a mess because you can imagine now I have to duplicate the scene again, just our artboard like so, and then create for every single instance of the item, I would have to create item with a border basically. To avoid that, we basically have like a symbols type of like actual states type of approach where we have the components and we can just easily edit it without having to duplicate the effort. So I would maybe create a component for that image, a component for that image, and I can just edit inside the actual component of what the behavior is like. Other instances of how to use this item. I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and create a couple of tabs, let's say. So tabs is one of the awesome ways to use the components so you don't have to create let's say multiple instances and multiple artboards for one thing you can just create a component which contains all the tabs but let me show you exactly what i mean let's say we have two different states to the one thing um i'm gonna just do maybe images and graphs so it's quite easy to implement and showcase exactly what i mean so here we have let's say a pie chart and an image icon like so um, again play with the visuals I don't really mind myself and what I would do I wouldn't just let's say create a copy of the scene for I could of course I could maybe make this one active like so if it's this it would be one of the ways to do so let's say oh this is our active icon let's say I'm gonna just change the color like so and then i could create the same for let's say the other one and then make a switch but you can just see how that would limit any other work i would want to make happen as you can see i, I created a switch let's say and then i can maybe 
have maybe here some sort of graphs or something along those lines, right? So we have two states. Um, it, it, maybe let's say on, 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 if I click on this one, it opens that. So it works like this. And maybe if I click on that, it works there. So we create kind of like a binary type of approach to things, but it's really unnecessary to do so because it complicates the things and it limits what we can do with a prototype because you're just gonna get lost. So a better way to do this type of thing is to actually create components. Now I'm just gonna quickly delete that second state we had with the actions, we don't need it here. And I'm just gonna select all those items which were included in our previous state like so so the icons the images we don't need the header it could be component of its own and as you can see I have that switch and here I'm gonna duplicate the scene so I keep it hidden I don't have to mess my my actual artboard original artboard and perhaps I'm just gonna delete those quick things like so and just have an image like this and I'm just gonna transition that like so and we can make a switch like just I like I showed it before that image and then I can create like a binary type of approach to switch the scenes and it's gonna be kept here so we're not gonna see anything as you can see it's clean I can create as many components as I want so here as you can see if I switch it works pretty good, doesn't it? And we avoided messing up our arbors and keeping it way too many arbors. Everything is contained with components and then we can create as many micro interactions and as many binary type of scenarios as we want to nest in and, and, and as much as we want to go deep. So this is basic inter introduction to components. I hope this is useful and I hope this you know, in just a few minutes gave you a lot of ideas of how you can utilize the principal app to its best. As usual, give a like, subscribe to his channel and stay tuned for more material like this. Leave a comment down below if you have any specific questions I can cover and I'll see you next time.